So here's the world card. Uh, and this is 21, like how we talked about. And it's the end of the major arcana. And really, it's in the mandala. Like, there is really no beginning or end to life, um, or the journey, or the path. So, and it makes a reference to the zero. It comes back to the fool. Um, it also makes a reference to the magician. This is a wand. Um, and to the high priestess, because of the pillars. So, also the hier hierophant. It looks like female form. It's curved. And this is the womb, the cosmic egg. So she's really a fetus within this womb. And this is the world saying that it's your world. This is the world that, you, that is created, that you witness through your filtered perception. This is also a card of sacred union. I feel like the major arcanas will probably all be sacred union cards because they are the universal big picture cards. So she is naked and she does have this, like a cloak or like a cloth, especially if it has um, stars, it's a rainbow body of light. She's floating or she's off of air. She's not, she's just in the air, just like being in a womb. The wreath, this is a wreath, and he also has a wreath on his head. It represents success. It represents achievement, um, victory, if those words help you. I mean, there's a whole list, but let's just simplify it. It's success. And it's tied with two ribbons. That's the eternal eight, the infinity. So this is an image that's really representing our highest divine um, true essence. So this is the I am presence to me. And it includes like all of the stars. And these are the astrological signs, the zodiac signs. This is Aquarius. Um, I think they're the fixed signs in the zodiac. The Aquarius, the Scorpio, um, Taurus, and Leo. To show the rainbow body of light. So the rainbow body of light, this this card could just represent rainbow body of light on its own. This is enlightenment. This is the full uh, awareness of the divinity within and divinity that is your world in its whole. This is the recognition that there is no separation from um, reality, your dream reality that is in front of you and your inner world. Um, no separation if you were to say anything about God or goddess, that that is the description of God. There is no separation between anything and there it is all powerful. All powerful um, universe. This being, she is naked and that Nudity is vulnerable. She is strong and empowered enough to show her vulnerability, her weaknesses, and recognize that she is the master of the world, of this reality. Um, this also tells me no expectation as well. She has, um, and as well, just like the Fool card. And I really feel like they go hand in hand because she just brings you right back to the Fool. But I think that the, the Fool card goes hand in hand with all of the cards because he is the hero of the journey. And this is the experiential visual of this Fool. Like, I feel like it's the same card. <laughs> um, and it's experiential because it's the sensations. It has to do with focus. It has to do with the microcosm and the macrocosm <clears throat> and focus. Yeah, I hope this stimulates some insights for all of you tarot readers out there. I mean, a lot of tarot readers I've noticed say this is a really good card. 
and it's possible this is a bad card. In fact, I could see some tarot readers like turning this one up, upside down. When they're really neutral, they're just neutral, and it depends on your perspective. If you wanted to go to a neutral point, I would go to wisdom and compassion, or DNA. And she's focusing, see this, so, that is pretty masculine then. Like, the masculine is like a straight, it's like the number one. That's the masculine in numerology. In the, the divine feminine is zero. She is, has that open womb space to create that baby or um, fetus. And he's got that staff. So he's got the awareness and this is the experience or the sensation. And together there's, there are like, I would say the number 22. Um, oh my God, this is the number 22. Cause this, yeah. So the number 22 to me in numerology, break it down. In numerology, we break it down. The two, if you broke down two, it would be one and one. And that is, um, 11 is like, to me represents twin flames, but it re represents um, sacred union um, of the divine masculine and divine feminine. So I always see two as sacred union, and that's in your heart space. Um, that's recognizing the divine masculine and feminine within yourself and you as a whole being. So we have two twos, and so that is like two beings who recognize sacred union within themselves coming together and creating foundation four four is the number of foundation and so they're coming together and they're creating foundation of sacred union so they're recognizing the compassion and wisdom within each other um, and they're mirroring it back to each other and they're creating a foundation of that compassion and wisdom it's like the power couple. This is also the number that represents Mary Magdalene, 22. And so um, that experience is totally within these two images because you've got the divine feminine in those qualities of the allowing space, the open, the womb, the openness, the invisible, darkness that you cannot see that's in within you can't see it because it's within your body the sensations are within your body and those vibrations um, recognizing those vibrations making those vibrations obvious divine masculine is ob obvious is the key word here um, so something that you cannot miss that everyone knows everyone can see you cannot miss it it's as obvious as your own hand you cannot miss it <laughs> so these two together is like a whole being recognizing um his wholeness and her wholeness coming together that's so cool it's in sacred union and that foundation because that would be 22 nice yes all right this could, they can both represent a journey as well. Um, yeah, this one, I mean, they can both represent ascension as well. Ascending, um, both represent um, enlightenment. So, especially with the, the portal, they're both portals. I mean, we've got the sun portal here, um, the walking off the edge portal, that's a portal. This, anytime you see a circle, that's definitely a portal. Um, a wormhole. Uh, so it's an energetic beyond the physical um, state of awareness. I guess. So what I would suggest, this is what I like to do when I'm learning about these cards, is do meditation and focus and observe the qualities of the image. So it's the qualities that you're reading. Open space, that's a quality. Um, floating or the experience of weightlessness. The fetus, that's quality. That the fetus, it has no expectations. Um, 
yeah, it can go on and on. Then when you're reading, you read them together, like do the same thing. You go back to uh, observation, neutral, uh, a neutral stance of oracle, priestess. Um, they're always focused on neutrality and being the calm of the chaos. So whatever is happening, whatever is happening in the reading, you're being the neutral calm point of observation. If anything comes up in a reading where it feels like it could be traumatic for the person, tune into your inner voice. I would tune into angels and I would, I work with angels and I would ask the angels, like, is it necessary for this person to know this? And if it is, ask the angels like, well, how am I to say this in a way where it is um, honoring that person's experience or boundaries so that you are so that I am making sure that they are um, not being re-traumatized by me saying this, you know? Because um, you can re-traumatize people if you bring up trauma in readings. And sometimes it's um, necessary, but and there's always a way to give the information that will be easy for them to hear and, and receive. <laughs> Thanks for uh, sticking with me, and I will be talking about more tarot cards um, when my body goes through that flow. Alright, so bye!